All right, so we're going to take another look at these functions of two variables. Uh, and this time, we're going to apply the process for determining continuity at a point. And this is very similar to the process for continuity of a function of one variable. Where you look at the value of the function, you look at the limit, and then you compare if the limit matches the value of the function. Um, and for a function to be continuous, you need the function to be defined there, you need the limit to exist, and you need those two to match up. Um, the limb part's where it gets a little different here because there's not just uh, one dimension to move along and approach the point, um, but we have two dimensions. And so there are infinite number of paths we could reach that limb point at. Um, and so uh, you'll see that broken down in, in the body of this methodology. The function we're going to look at is f of x, y equals y squared sine of x over x, and we're interested in continuity at the point 0, 1. So uh, again, you can, as soon as one of these things kind of messes up, know what the continuity call is, but you want to follow through with the analysis uh, regardless uh, so you get more practice with the technique. Uh, so the first step is just to evaluate the function at the point. Um, and so evaluating this function at the point 0, 1, we replace x with 0, replace y with 1. So you get 1 squared sine of 0 over 0. And since we have division by 0 here, uh, then this number does not exist. Um, so the value of the function does not exist. And so technically, right away, we could say, no, it's not continuous at that point. But we want to know more about it, and we want more practice with the technique. So let's move on. Now we're going to kind of look at taking some limits as we approach the point zero one, and uh, it's worth kind of pausing and going to a view of the x y plane. Um, and you know we're interested in the point zero one, which is right here. And if we think about approaching that point, we could do it uh, in an infinite number of paths, right? Um, coming at it from any angle, coming at it in a straight line or a curved line. Now, in order for the limit at that point to exist, we technically need all the limits, all the infinite number of limits that go there to exist and to agree. So that's not possible. So what we do is we usually take uh, a couple or several limits and then and then conclude from that. Um, and so we will primarily use uh, the some kind of limit parallel to the x-axis. So approaching it from the left and right. Um, in this case, that'll be on the line y equals one. Approaching it from the top and bottom. Uh, in this case, that'll be on the line x equals zero. And then some uh, other path, I like to do uh, something like a diagonal, um, some other curve, but it has to go through the point. And uh, so you could do a kind of a diagonal line you know, like this. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work or it's just harder than a curved line. And so we're actually going to try um, is, is kind of a curved line that goes in there. Um, and we'll see why when we actually do the process works best. So um, the limits uh, along the line parallel to the x-axis will be first. And so we will first just consider this. And so we'd, if, if we're moving on the that line, then all the y values are one, we can actually replace y with one in the function of several variables. And then we can take the limit as x goes to zero, right? Because that's what's happening there. Um, and so that'll be uh, step two. So the, let's see. Mm 
And there's the one there tells us that it's one here. So we'll first just replace y with one. And this brings you back to a function of, oops, uh, of one variable. Uh, one squared is one, one times sine of x is sine of x. And so we get a, a familiar function that is brought up usually in Calc 1 uh, as an example of limits. Now, then we take the limit and we take the limit as x goes to zero. Uh, and you can do this limit in a couple different ways, um, but usually, like in Calc 1, it's actually just brought up as uh, an example that you memorize. You can graphically validate it. Um, and then in Calc 2, you should have seen that you can do kind of a uh, an expansion of the Taylor series of this. And uh, sine is 1 plus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus dot dot dot. Um, and uh, if you look at that, then when you take the limit as x goes to 0, um, well, you, then you'd simplify. Oh, wait, I did the wrong one, didn't I? <laughs> the first term's not. I was wondering why this wasn't working. Or right, we had a kitty come in and really mess us up. Uh, remember, sine is an odd function. And so... Uh, these terms should all be odd, and so that's x. There it is. And, and then you can kind of simplify that result and um, it goes to 1 plus x squared over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth for 5 factorial. And all those terms with x go to zero, and so you just get one. So um, this limit is equal to one, and there's some other ways to do it as well. Uh, that's a good one to keep in your back pocket there. All right, so the limit uh, in along that path exists and is equal to one, and uh, what we want is we want um, multiple limits towards this point to exist and equal the same thing to have continuity. Again, we'd also need the function to exist at the point in step one and then all these limits to match that value. Um, but uh, we already know that's not going to happen because step one uh, did not exist, right? All right, so now we're going to look at uh, along the vertical line, uh, not y, x equals zero. And if you replace x with zero, you get f as a function of y. Uh, and you realize that this function does not exist. Every point uh, when x equals zero is undefined. And therefore, that entire vertical line um, is not in the domain of the function. Um, and so that means that you are unable to take the limit there. And so the limit there does not exist. Um, so, you know, what if that was the only problem and like all the other limits went to one and then this one limit did not exist. I mean, you could certainly make an argument that um, that the limit was equal to one in some sense, 
um, but you need to kind of explain that, say, except for being along the line x equals zero, the limit is going to one, um, which I think is the case uh, for this. Um, as for the continuity, right, there's no question. I mean, you clearly have a discontinuity. Um, and, and this is really at the heart of it, right? There's an entire line of like what we called holes uh, in the case of a function of one variable. All right, so um, now we take a limit going through uh, something that's not horizontal or vertical, and you can use a line parallel to y equals x. Um, if we do that, remember that we're interested in the point uh, 0, 1. And so the line y equals x does not go through the point 0, 1. So you'd need to adjust it um, by doing y equals x plus 1. Now you've got a, a line that goes through that point. So that's a candidate there, y equals x plus 1. If I try that, Then I'm replacing y with x plus 1. And so we write it like that. And then the y squared is x plus 1 in parentheses squared. And that's kind of a complicated function to work with. I mean, you certainly could um, take that limit as x goes to 0. Um, but I think you'll see that adjusting this is going to make it a little easier. Um, plus, I wanted to show you an example of finding a nonlinear path. And so in thinking, looking at this, I think the problem is that square seems to make the limit a little more complicated. So since I see that y is squared, I can uh, just put a square root here. Again, maybe we want to make sure that that actually works. And in fact, the line square, the function square root of x plus one does indeed go through the point zero one. So we can use that nonlinear path and then the square root and the square will cancel and we'll get a little better of a result. So we would then put the square root right here and then there's a square root right there. The square root and the square cancel and we get just a regular x plus 1. Uh, we can then distribute the sign to the x and the 1, and we can kind of break up this fraction. Uh, take the limit as x goes to 0. Uh, and you'll get, you'll get is uh, x sine x over x um, plus sine of x over x. And of course, the x sine x over x simplifies to just a regular sine of x. And now when I go in to take the limit as x goes to 0, the limit here, sine of 0, 0. And then this one we goes to 1, and so we get 1. <laughs> And I think if, for in fact, for all paths other than that vertical one, you will get the limit going to one. But this is a case of any one counterexample, any single path uh, can make the limit overall not exist um, and, and lead to discontinuity, right? That's what we're looking for. So you could clarify and say, yeah, the limit is, is one, except if you're along the line x equals zero. Um, but in terms of looking at continuity, uh, that's that's enough to break the continuity there, right? And it essentially will divide this uh, surface into like two separate sheets. Um, all right. So uh, in step five, we uh, compare the limits. And what you're looking for is if all the limits that you took in steps two, three, and four 
uh, exist and they all agree to the same value, then that is the overall limit. Um, and you could say something like uh, limit as x, y goes to 0, 1 of f of x comma y uh, is equal to 1. Um, but we would have to qualify that and say, except at x equals zero. And it wouldn't be wrong to just say uh, that this limit does not exist because of that. But you know, there's there's obviously a little more to the story. So uh, since we had a limit that did not exist, uh, the overall limit does not exist. Um, to wrap this up, we want to graph the function near the limit point uh, and kind of see what's happening. Now, graphing can be tough for limits. Um, let's do the 3D graph first, and then I'll show you a little bit with graphing some traces. Um, so for the 3D graph, we're going to go to Python. Um, now, this isn't part of the lab, but the lab code's helpful. So what I would say is, um, you know, use the launcher to create a new notebook, and then uh, you can rename it Sandbox or something like that, where you're just kind of doing calculations um, to mess around with. If you don't see the launcher, um, then I think you go to uh, File and then New Launcher to make that reappear. Uh, and then we're looking at lab four and just kind of copy that boilerplate code and then copy the code here um, that let us graph and then uh, open up your sandbox and, you know, paste it somewhere. Uh, I guess I, I've already done it here just to make sure everything's going to work out. And uh, that's going to be the graph from the last methodology. Let's adjust it now. And what we'll do is we'll put in our function here, which is that y is squared. And then it's times sine of x and then divided by x. And that's the function uh, that we're looking at. And it looks pretty continuous, right? Um, and so what you will see if we do a zoom in around the point in question, um, maybe make X go from negative one to one, and then Y go from uh, zero to two to kind of zoom in around the point zero one, you can kind of confirm that we were getting those values right around z equals one there, right? Because it's right in the middle here. And so approaching from the left and right, we were hitting that z equals one. Um, but yeah, what you don't see is you don't see there's an entire line of holes. And that's because the in general, right, when you use graphing tools, they don't usually show those holes. Um, and so uh, you've got to kind of take the graph with a grain of salt, I guess, as they say. Now, you might find it helpful to um, look at vertical traces and specifically the one um, when step two, when y equals one, um, was our, our good friend sine of x over x, right? And so as you're approaching it, for any uh, y value, you're going to get something pretty similar, uh, where again, it looks continuous, but then if you carefully put the point right there, um, you'll see that it is undefined, right? So even Desmos doesn't really show you that hole unless you know exactly where to look for it. Um, putting in a different y value will just give you, you know, if you put in y is two, you got a four here, and that's the same issue. And so every one of those traces um, parallel to the XZ plane uh, is going to reveal that line of discontinuity. And so, in fact, there is 
a, a separation here, right? A very subtle kind of hidden one that, let's see if I can draw that like every point on this line uh, is there. And so in fact, the, the surface is two separate sheets um, separated by an infinitesimal missing line. Uh, and so all the limits are going to work unless you're on that line. Um, all right, well, uh, so end of the day, the function is not continuous. Um, and by looking at con continuity at that one point, we kind of determine the continuity for the whole function, right? Because um, it is just a generalization of the continuity at every point. Um, if you text at any point not on that line, it would come out as continuous. Um, and then any point on that line will come out as discontinuous. All right, that's going to do it for um, continuity for function two variables. We'll take a look at, uh, I think, what is next? Uh, partial derivatives. We'll just actually start taking derivatives of these surfaces in the next video.